on the sex scandal at the Richmond County Sheriff's Office that cost two deputies their jobs. Tonight we're hearing from one of those deputies. Allison Walker was fired back in September. Reports show she lied about having a relationship with her supervisor, Captain Brandon Beckman. He's a 24-year veteran with the agency and a member of the Sheriff's Command staff. She'd only been at the Sheriff's Office for about four years and was working her way up the ranks. She now says she was just following orders to not tell the truth. And as our Meredith Anderson reports, she asked the Sheriff's Merit Board for her job back. Like all deputy personnel files, Allie Walker's is public record. So when the I-team first requested it, we noticed this. It's a pretty detailed, detailed account from 2012 about a sexual assault. Her friend's parents called deputies about it. Now, until now, we had not reported this because we wanted to protect her as a possible victim. And we won't disclose the details now. But when Allie Walker asked for her job back, she claimed she was sexually assaulted again, this time at the sheriff's office when she was first starting her career as a deputy. So if you all will stand and raise your right hand. Before we begin. You swear and or affirm that the information you shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's important to note Allie Walker is under oath because she's about to make a serious allegation. She says someone with a high rank sexually assaulted her at the sheriff's office when she was being recruited. The supervisor, without any hesitation, with full confidence, proceeded to threaten me when he told me that he would have my career if I reported the assault. The supervisor told me I would never get promoted or go to any schools. I was terrified because I knew he knew where I lived. She never names her attacker, but tells the merit board she lived in fear of him. While in the police academy, the supervisor continued to threaten me. For example, he would tell me that he owned me and reminded me that he controlled my career. She claims not coming forward and being truthful about this came back to haunt her when Captain Brandon Beckman first started texting her. I thought it was weird and it made me uncomfortable at first. I asked someone if they thought it was weird because it made me a little uncomfortable and they said, no, it's good that he's showing interest in you. Captain Beckman was the head of criminal investigations, and Walker was interviewing to be an investigator. There were times where Captain Beckman would send me messages that made me uncomfortable, so I wouldn't respond, which led him to message me from his secondary phone. On one occasion, Captain Beckman drove by my residence because I wouldn't message him. He messaged me saying, I drove by your place and your car wasn't there. Employees eventually tipped internal affairs off to the relationship, which is why Walker and Beckman were questioned about it. According to documents the I-team obtained from Internal Affairs, Beckman lied three times during interviews about a relationship with Walker. Records state he also failed a polygraph test. Walker never took a polygraph, but reports show she lied twice. I feared that if I told the truth, my career in life would be disrupted by Captain Beckman. But this went against my integrity, so after the second interview, I called Internal Affairs crying, saying I can't do this anymore and I wanted to tell them the truth. She also claims Beckman ordered her to lie and says she even brought proof. I have a text message of him admitting not to tell the truth. Walker admitted this was the first time she shared this text message, which the lawyer for the sheriff's office pointed out as a problem. I would say that this is all after the fact. Yes. This, okay. this is coming weeks after the termination. But the board was able to hear it before making a decision. A decision, Walker said, that could mean more than just getting her job back. I'm asking for help as a sexual assault victim while employed as a deputy for the Richmond County Sheriff's Office. I know I need counseling and other resources that would help me heal and cope with my trauma. While the lawyer calls all of this unfortunate and says she sympathizes with Walker, she argued they weren't there to discuss Walker's past. She says the reason for this hearing is because Walker made a conscious decision to not tell the truth. None of these claims for which she is now stating, none of that was mentioned. She was given every opportunity to give a reason why or to say, you know, she was under pressure. None of that was mentioned during any of her interviews. At the hearing, Chief Deputy Patrick Clayton said your usefulness as an investigator who hasn't told the truth becomes very limited. That's because if you testify in court, juries won't believe you. And the fact that she lied will always be an issue. The board voted and upheld the sheriff's office decision to fire Allie Walker.
Of course, I'll keep digging. All right, thanks for digging into that, Meredith.